It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Sally here. For the last few days, it has been nothing but craziness in the United States in regards to these kind of riots because it's not just me and Annapolis right now, it's pretty much happening across the whole entire country. And so I figured just why not respond to the tweets that are just really stupid. So without further ado, let's begin. My grandfather was part of an anti-fascist organization. It was called the United States Army when he was in World War II and fought the fascists and Nazis in Europe for the freedom of the world. When did being anti-fascist become a bad thing in the United States? I honestly don't think that the two are similar because the global threat of Nazi Germany is way different than Antifa because back then, of course, the Allies, including United States, Russia, France, and United Kingdom, fought to actually maintain peace for the world. Meanwhile, Antifa are nothing but thugs that actually attack people, destroy buildings, destroy cars, set stuff on fire. So to me at least, the two things are completely different because the approaches that they take are actually not saving the entire country. As I record this video, our president actually announced that he wants to make like Antifa classify as a terrorist organization. And honestly, there are some arguments that are on Twitter that basically state that, of course, Antifa are not, you know, organized. However, I think it's the opposite of that. Because tell me this, if they're not organized, why do they have the exact same sort of uniform for, like, black? If they're not organized, why did he plan out the events to, of course, attack people and destroy buildings? Like, every single time something actually happens in those kind of events, they actually plan out the location to go to to start their attack. So to me, at least from the outside, it seems as though that they actually are, in fact, organized to do this kind of stuff. And to say otherwise, I don't know how to feel about that. Islam is a religion of justice and a religion that forbids any form of racism. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Hashtag I can't breathe. I find it so funny that this person is claiming that Islam is anti-racist because you could find in Hadith that of course that Muhammad was depicted as a white guy and of course he had like black slaves and he referred to the slaves as raisins. And of course, slavery in the Islamic world continues to happen to this very day. So if it's so anti-racist, why is there like various stories of Muhammad actually owning black slaves, calling them raisins, and actually having slavery in the Middle East and African countries? So that's like the worst type of anti-racism if you were to ask me. White supremacists equals Trump supporters. These are Trump supporters burning and looting. There's like a lot of garbage that I need to unpack for that tweet. For starters, just because somebody is like a Trump supporter, I don't automatically think that they're a white supremacist. Mostly because, of course, there are probably some bad apples within Trump supporters, that is true. Maybe some of them are in fact legit white supremacists. But to assume automatically that a Trump supporter is a white supremacist is not actually giving them the courtesy to actually give them the benefit of the doubt that they are not white supremacists. So not all Trump supporters are white supremacists. And I'm pretty sure you can say the same exact thing in regards to other candidates. For example, I'm pretty sure like people like Obama or like, you know, people like Clinton has some really bad supporters that were like Antifa or white supremacists. However, it's not right for me to label all Obama supporters or all Clinton supporters as white supremacists. So I think this whole entire tweet generalize the idea that if you're a Trump supporter, you're a white supremacist. However, that is just reductionist reasoning. It does not make any sense to me. As far as, of course, build, like destroying buildings and stuff, those are not white supremacists. That's actually Antifa. So not all you wrong about, of course, the idea of these people being white supremacists. You're also wrong to assume that all Trump supporters are white supremacists. 
All this video really proves to me is that the riots are long overdue. This, Floyd, and every video like them are infuriating. Burning down local supply chains in the middle of a pandemic is stupid and irresponsible objectively. But this anger did not come out of nowhere. Chris, I do in fact agree that police brutality is actually really terrible and we need to do something about it, like reform like the police stations and stuff and better train the officers. However, no type of riot is actually warranted. You probably know this by yourself, of course, that of course, if somebody were to riot against like businesses and stuff, people would actually lose their job and actually not recover from any kind of damage costs. And so we're living a pandemic where people are already unemployed as it is. And so when these people just destroy buildings and actually set stuff on fire, you're also not helping much of your community. So obviously the best way to solve this whole entire issue is actually to protest peacefully and not violently. Civilization under our morality versus civilization under their morality. As you guys can clearly see, I'm not just going after the Muslims, I'm going after the Christians too in this video, so I'm an equal opportunity offender for this type of video. For the fucks and the cheap sheets, the chaos that we're witnessing is a direct result of our rulers abandoning the Christianity that built the West. Ah uh, yes, this famous claim that somehow Christianity built the whole entire West is a very interesting and curious claim. Now, the main reason why I say it's curious it's because obviously there is some influence from Christianity into our culture and of course it might actually influence how we see stuff. For example, for stuff like holidays like Christmas, Easter, Halloween, basically they're based upon of course like a lot of Christian holidays. However, those type of holidays are not necessarily Christian in origin because Halloween, Christmas, and Easter, those type of holidays were based upon pagan ideas. Not to mention the modern day science that we know nowadays, we pretty much borrowed that from the ancient Greek people. Our ideas about, of course, democracy also came from the ancient Greeks. The idea of, of course, separation of church and state secularism did not come from Christianity either. As a matter of fact, one famous example of like a nation that actually had like Christian influence is Ireland. For a long period of time, of course, you cannot blaspheme against religion because of course they were ruled by Catholics and of course there was this guy, his name was like uh, Stephen Fry. He blasphemed God and he tried to actually fine him for blaspheming God in Ireland. Now, my only conclusion from that whole entire scenario is how basically that whole entire thing was inspired by the Ten Commandments because it said to not use God's name in vain and that's probably the main reason why they had the blasphemy law. However, as I speak right now, the blasphemy law is actually illegal in Ireland so I'm really, really happy about that news. For the case of the United States, like basically people who are Christians went out there like a lot of stuff for minorities. For example, for the case of gay marriage, many Christians use the Old Testament with stories like Sodom and Gomorrah as examples of why people should not actually get gay married. Another example of this is of course women's rights. Now the women liberation, it was not inspired by Christianity because basically the Bible states that women should be silent in church and be like the, like the homemaker. And also another example of this is like slavery, where basically of course it says like slaves need to of course like obey their masters. And so another example is the Salem witch trials, where it's basically used the Bible verses against witchcraft as justification to burn people who they consider to be witches. And so it seems as though that the more religious society is, the more authoritative it is, the less rights the people actually have. And so by actually breaking away from religious traditions, people are actually much more freer, much more happier. And of course, the, among the happiest nations in the world are actually countries that are not religious. And so it seems as though that the more that we break from religious tradition, the better we're actually off as a society. 
As far as like the burning building example, you actually show McDonald's. Of course, during our history, like the White House was also burned to the ground. And so it didn't really matter if we actually had like Christian influence or not. Basically, the White House also burnt down. So not a good example, really. Anti-racism is not a code for anti-white. There are white rioters and black cops. Everyone benefits from a more just and fair society, no matter their skin color. Actually, anti-racism is in fact anti-white because a lot of these activists that are on the street nowadays, they claim that they cannot be racist because of power and prejudice, and so therefore they cannot be racist against other people. So yes, every single time woke activists actually say that and claim that they're anti-racist, they are in fact, you know, anti-white. George Floyd did not die from a neck to the knee. He was not murdered by cops. He had a terrible underlining health conditions. Anyone who called the cops murderers has blood on their hands tonight. God help you all. According to this very insane logic, if I, for example, has somebody with a car and they actually have some sort of health issues with like the heart and stuff, it's not my fault that I actually killed that person. What's actually the fault is of course that person having those kind of heart diseases before I crashed that person. That's how stupid you sound right now. Donald Trump needs to declare himself a dictator. After witnessing the violence in Minneapolis, no Democrat should be allowed to hold power ever again. The Democratic Party is a domestic terrorist organization that wants to watch our country burn. How the fuck do you guys call yourself Liberty Hangout, yet want a dictatorship? My brain just hurts at the start of that whole entire idea. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. The events of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre.